Welcome back to TYT Sports. JR and Jason lounging. Lounging at the chairs. Yeah, yeah. Lounge edition, why not? Uh, Derek Rose swept the internet yesterday for the umpteenth time in his career, or his injury-riddled career. So a few different <laughs> news stories. JR, thank you for joining me, as always, for these yep. clips. But uh, three specific news stories. Uh, updates. One uh, in the update section of the Derek Rose clip here is the alleged gang rape uh, situation has now kind of taken a different turn as the parties involved are claiming two different things. We'll get to some more of that later, including quotes from Chicago Tribune and Gawker, all that good stuff. Moving forward from that, the big news from yesterday was Derek Rose left face or left orbital fracture in his face. <laughs> Not necessarily his face. fault. He got elbowed in practice, but it does make the point, is Derrick Rose the most fragile human being in the history of sports and maybe the history of mankind? Potentially, yes. And uh, lastly, he was complaining about the money that is being thrown around in the NBA. We have our thoughts and opinions. So let's, uh, let's quickly start actually with the, the alleged rape, uh, gang rape mm -hmm. update. So I want to read off two uh, quotes. This is both from, this is from Deadspin. And then one half of it comes from a link source to the Chicago Tribune. She said side of this he said, she said situation, this is for context for you, went into great detail about what Rose and his buddies Randall Hampton, Ryan Allen, and 10 unnamed others allegedly did that night. Jane Doe's complaints alleges, alleges that the defendants drugged and incapacitated her and sent away the female friend who was there looking out for her. Then they allegedly drove with Jane Doe, who says that she was still in and out of consciousness, to her unlocked apartment took turns having sex with her, and left her covered in lube and surrounded by used condoms, which is a very drastic claim. Other side of the story, the woman was okay with everything that happened that night, Rose claims, until he and, quote, one or more co-defendants stopped responding to her text. In his version of the story, it wasn't until months after the incident that she got mad and filed a lawsuit. So now what's happening is Rose's lawyers are basically demanding for her to be dropping these charges. Uh, if not, it will go to court and a jury will decide. Uh, so there's that update. So she which, just, if this is a civil suit. She's not, she's, there's, there's no warrants out for arrest or he's not looking for any criminal I don't uh, think lawsuits so. right now. I believe so. it is a civil suit, yes. Uh, so that's the update, at least on the, the Derrick Rose gang rape situation. Mm -hmm. Now we move forward because his orbital fracture in his face came from practice. He got elbowed. Uh, he, it's, I want to first take a look at the injury timeline because Derrick Rose has been injured more times than I can even remember or count uh, since the 2010-11 MVP season, where he didn't even play 82 games. He played 81. Uh, <laughs> January 2012, sprained toe. Oh, five games. 2012 uh, of February also strained back. March through April 2012, groin, ankle, foot. 17 games. 2012 to 2013, this is where the knee issues start happening. Torn ACL. Meniscus in November of the next year. Uh, ankle and hamstring November of the following year. In February 2015, is meniscus again. I don't know what he has left in his knees, and now his face yeah. is a little bit beat up. JR is Because Derek part Rose. about the length in some of those injuries was, I remember with the knee, one of the knee injuries, it wasn't the AC, it must have been the meniscus. I don't know how the knee is put together. I'm sorry, I'm not a doctor. But um, <laughs> there was one where he can get surgery and can be back sooner, but then later in life, he doesn't have that cushioning or some part of your knee that you're supposed it to have definitely to help to do with, with comfort. The cartilage of your knee. Right, there was a cartilage. so many right. guys with a bone-on-bone bone So problem. he decided to stick with a normal knee and not go through surgery, which of course when you do surgery, a lot of times it's a longer healing process. Mm -hmm. That's what the length of time was. People gave him a lot of trouble for that and I was one of the let him go people, like mm -hmm. let the guy live his life. He, this is when the post-basketball life conversation he was having yeah. about I'd like to imagine my life after basketball and everyone got mad at him for that too. So uh, the length of injuries, I take a little less as a problem than the number and also the number Again, a lot of there's a blame that goes to the guy, and you might be a little surprised because I've always been somewhat of a defender of Derrick Rose mm -hmm. in that he doesn't control these things. He's the type of explosive player. He's spring. He's like a springboard. Yes. He gets in the middle of things. He doesn't care that he's a, what, a 6'3", six, 6'4", six, point guard. Yeah, small guard. So in that, he's in the middle of things, and that's when injuries happen. Look, Allen Iverson had tons of injuries, but they maybe weren't as significant as knee things, but he always had something dinged up. Allen Iverson played through all that. He's six foot 190 guard, you know? <laughs> so true. that happens to guys who get in the mix. And the orbital fracture, he's probably in the middle of a mix again. Elbows are going to fly, like, you know, indiscriminately. Yeah. And he caught one. It's, I like to err more on the side of unlucky than on the side of Mr. Glass. 
uh, um, Westbrook is a similar guard, except he's a little bigger. And well, he got his face dented. Yeah, I mean, look how many, <laughs> so, look how they have type of things that happen to this guy. Yeah, they're explosive so, guys, and it happens to them. So uh, I am a believer that Derrick Rose is made of glass. I actually <laughs> tweeted out yesterday that Derrick Rose is made of glass. Uh, and of course, I have to add in the very hilarious and totally appropriate. I know Jr. also watches uh, avid SpongeBob SquarePants fan. Oh, yeah, uh, this meme started circulating yesterday that I was born with glass bones and paper skin. Every morning I break my legs, and every afternoon I break my <laughs> arms. <laughs> oh, that's a winner! It's a new ESPN 30 for 30 film, a day in the a day in the life of Derrick Rose, and of course, uh, Chicago fans who are not the most delusional fans in the country. I compliment Chicago. I I totally approve of your mm. teams, uh, but this is how some, not all, actually probably the minority of the Chicago fans feel this way. Feel that Derrick Rose is going to return to the NBA because <laughs> uh, he's got a mask, so Bane, so it'll be unstoppable. Uh, I think he also needs two of those on his knees. That'd be pretty badass. <laughs> that would be the best mask. <laughs> By the way, I'm actually very excited to see what kind of mask he brings out because I remember the original, the OG of the mask, Rip Hamilton, Detroit Pistons. It, well, he still went with the clear version. Of clear right? version, yeah. like the, the not flashy well, one. I, and I don't LeBron's give any, got the... I don't want to give out any business ideas because it just came to me now. But why, you know, if you're going to wear a mask, which is, it's not like it's more common in today's NBA, but it happens. And everyone looks at the mask now. When LeBron wore a mask for a minute, and then yeah. eventually took it off because it's uncomfortable, or Carmelo, Carmelo, someone, it was issues people LeBron, had. LeBron, Westbrook, uh, yeah. Westbrook did played well in the mask though. And maybe, and may, yeah, he did. And maybe even, um, maybe these things could be marketed. You have a mask like he's back with the Bulls, and there's like a Bulls logo somewhat on the mask. It'd be kind of badass. Sponsored by Adidas. It'd be awesome. Uh, because that's where his sponsorship comes from. So, uh, in addition to that, uh, it's his left side of his face, which could perfectly sync up with being fan of the opera. So if he does <laughs> having trouble themes. He's having trouble finding work in the NBA. <laughs> My friend Derek Rose, Broadway is hiring. Um, and his no, so explosiveness I, I guess, will come out in the form of Broadway. So I mean I guess back to this, how much people like I, I feel like I get the label of the player apologist anytime I'm on here. Oh of course Jared's gonna apologize to the players. Are you the, are you the oh, of course. Senior correspondent for player apologies. Yeah so I'm I, I apologize <laughs> for Derek Rose and his injuries. It's yeah. not his fault necessarily. It, I, how can it be? So I I don't I agree with you on the fact that like it's it's mo a lot of injuries like unless you're Michael Vick I'm gonna use the example because when mm. you're scrambling out of the pocket yeah. like you're there's a better chance you're right. gonna get injured but in Derrick Rose's case look your knee like some guys knees give out Marcus Camby's a great example of that who like, it wasn't his fault that his knees fell apart Tracy McGrady <laughs> Tracy McGrady's knees fell apart and then he stopped caring <laughs> but it wasn't his fault originally that his knees fell apart right. on him. Um, and there's a lot of players like that. Greg Oden, just completely injury-riddled before yeah. he even came in the NBA. Joel Embiid, the new example of Greg Oden, already out for this season because of this nagging foot injury, which is mm -hmm. awful because he's the best at Twitter in the entire athletic world. But uh, it does get me to a point where I can't agree with Rose because at NBA Media Day, Rose was asked uh, what he was doing in his offseason. His response was uh, half totally fair. First mm -hmm. half, good points, Derek Rose. I spent time with my family, as you should and I worked out every day to get ready for the season. Generic response, the right response, good for you. The second half was a problem with it because he goes on to say, and I am paraphrasing, uh, that based off the amount of money that's going out in the league, all these guys signing these $125 million contracts and maybe are being overpaid, uh, he's worried about his family's financial security. Okay, you don't have the grounds to stand on that, and some of this I'm um, channeling through Colin Coward's radio show this morning, but credit where credit's due. Mm -hmm. You don't have the grounds to stand on, actually because you can't stand in general, but you don't have those grounds to stand on because you, my friend, have been injured for over 280 plus games in your career. You are worried about your free agency in 2017. You're worried about another contract when you already have a healthy contract as it is, considering you barely play the game. And what really ticked me off is the fact that he has a $180 million Adidas deal, so he gets $40 million a year for literally doing jack shit on the court. So if you're really worried about your family's financial security and $40 million a, deal a year forty million dollars a year in Adidas sponsorship isn't enough or satisfying to you? So can I be the next apologist again on this? <laughs> so so in, in yes. this case, I feel like we're doing a first take type of setup here. We have to dis disagree, right? But this wasn't set up the way they do on those shows. We actually may disagree on this. Only because, again, man, in, you got to think of it in, in comparison. Yes, he's missed a lot of games, and he's probably getting paid fine for what he's missed, probably more so, because if you do it as far as what you've produced to get the money that you deserve. 
But in, in the statement, maybe it's worded correctly and it's got me convinced. He goes, in the offseason, I was worried about considering all the money that's going everywhere, my financial security. He didn't necessarily blame anyone. He just said, I'm worrying about it. Maybe that's why he's working out. Maybe that's why he's hoping to not have any injuries. Maybe he's frustrated by these injuries more than we are. And he's like, I'm worried kind of about my financial future. I could be making $120, $30 million contracts. I'm only making 80 because I keep getting injured. So I need to work on how to fix that. I mean, he didn't necessarily say, I'm tired of these horrible contracts. I'm tired of them not respecting me. I'm tired of them not giving me the money I deserve. He didn't say that. He just said, I'm worried about my financial future. Maybe that's on him. Maybe. And then, and then so the Adidas deal. No, he's done nothing on court for the Adidas deal. He had that before he, the, the one of the big knee he got that. He got that during right. MVP campaign. Yeah, yes. yeah. But no, but then after that, he didn't do much. His knee injuries popped up. Adidas is probably selling plenty of things that he's pushing. So Adidas is probably getting their money's worth for what they're giving him. Mm. That aspect is fine. But, and he didn't bring up Adidas. He only brought up the NBA money that's floating around. So maybe he's like, I got to make sure I get my piece of the NBA pie. So let me fix these broken but knees and broken face. But here's one crazy, crazy way to get a piece of that pie. Stay healthy. But Refine <laughs> your game. There's players in the NBA that have, like Russell Westbrook's an example. There is no, I'm going to play 70%. Like, I'm, he goes 110% every single game, as Kobe Bryant mentioned in the NBA TV right. interview, like, who plays mean? He plays aggressive. Gives it his all. And, of course, it's like an arbitrary statement. Like, mm. of course these guys are going to be there all every night. But Westbrook is a little more visible. Derrick Rose, during his MVP campaign, going back to when he played at Memphis, was that aggressive, attack-the-rim, explosive, sure. will make you miss, almost like in an NFL way. Mm -hmm. They killed juke players. You're the high guy to the hole, actually. Yes, yeah. every single time. It was, And it was, I was, I was, I was a huge Derrick Rose <clears throat> fan. Loved watching him. Even when he missed free throws, I would. it was okay. <laughs> God, do I hate Mario Chalmers, though. Oh, it's a different clip. That's yeah, a different segment. Yeah. But with Derrick Rose, he needs to absolutely take a new step in the, a different direction for his game. Ray Allen, in his later stages of his career, played very few minutes and was efficient and effective. Wes Matthews has become, and Ben Mankiewicz hates us, the 3 and D guy because he thinks that's a made-up thing that happened uh -huh. somewhere by bloggers over the last six years. No, that is actually a real thing in the NBA, and it's a very useful piece. Uh, but Wes Matthews, of course, he had the ACL injury. But before that, 3 and D guy, it's, it doesn't take so much explosiveness out of your game. You can simply be efficient. Play 15 to 20 minutes a game until 50 games into the season. The Bulls have obviously proven that without Damn, Rose, true. they are a playoff team and a contender every year. Have any of these injuries ever happened in a game? I feel like every time I hear about a Derrick Rose injury... <laughs> It's like in a pickup game. It's off the Yeah, court. like I'm not sure what kind of practice procedures he goes through, what kind of practices they're running in Chicago, but maybe they're a little too well, intense. That's another one, and I want to get to Jimmy Butler's quote first, but also Tim Tom Thibodeau would drive his players into the ground, uh, one of the most overrated coaches, in my opinion, uh -huh. personally speaking. Wow. But, and I'll explain well, in a second. In Chicago. But calm Chicago. down, Chicago. If you won a championship, you wouldn't be overrated. If you got to a championship, you wouldn't be overrated. But uh, Jimmy Butler had interesting things to say about Derrick Rose, yeah. uh, and it involves unicorns, which is uh, Der uh, Jared Jackson's favorite type of animal. <laughs> Butler on Rose's contract comments, he can talk about unicorns and rainbows for all I care. Just help us win some basketball games. Thank you, Jimmy Butler. He understands it. Uh, and That's it's, something he can say straight to Derrick Rose's face, and I'm sure Rose You know what? Right? I take back what I just said. You're 100% right. That doesn't belong on Twitter. That doesn't belong in... Oh, it media. can be, too. But it's fine no, 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 with me. But no, you're right. You're right. That belongs to Derrick Rose's face. That should go right to Derrick Rose. We should good. probably not even know about it, but because we do, I'm happy about it. I'm okay knowing him. And I agree with Jimmy Butler. Uh, because in general, I know, we got to wrap up. But Jimmy Butler is right. Uh, it's slowly but surely becoming Jimmy Butler's team, and it should be.